Welcome to Lunch and Learn. Yeah. Okay, welcome to our, our Lunch and Learn session. Eh? That session we did. So, I uh, hope you all have your good lunch. Okay. All right. Um, today, we'll share um, one case study. Eh? Auspicious Journey Sendian Berhad against Ebony Ritz Sendian Berhad. Okay, it's a federal court decision, 2021, um, discussing about the issue of minority shareholder. I think we have been hearing of a minority shareholder, how to bring their actions against the majority shareholder, okay, against the company. Okay, so this one, if uh, is this case give a very good example, okay, and uh, the, 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 the issues, okay, that uh, always arise, okay, yeah, in minority shareholder, all right? So they'll start. Uh, first slide, I mean, uh, next slide. Okay, um, if you read this case, it, um, it involves a lot of company, okay? Uh, first, I, I write it in um, normal note, but I think um, you'll be mixed up, okay? So I try to do it in a chart way, la, so to help you all understand. Okay, uh, the fact is like this. These two companies, uh, Auspicious Journey, we call it Auspicious Journey, and Ho Leong. Ho Leong is a Singapore company, uh, HQ in Singapore, Ho Leong Corporation. So they two joint venture to form this company called Ebony Ritz. Okay, next slide. Under this Ebony Ritz, okay, the shareholding is as follows. Eh? Auspicious Journey hold 20% shares. So it is a minority shareholder, okay? So the remaining 80% was held by Ho Leong, okay, majority. So 20 and 80, uh. remember, because then later you go to the shareholding, uh, you be confused. So I try to make it, okay, chart so you can see clearly. Okay, so Ebony Reads has three directors. One is directed, uh, is nominated by Auspicious Journey, Andy Quack. Okay, and another two, we call it Qua Brothers, okay, uh, nominated by Ho Leong. So they have three directors, yeah? Next slide. So the purpose of uh, establishing this uh, company, I mean, forming this Ebony Ritz is to acquire, okay, this oil tanker chartering business, okay, named uh, Samoa International. So um, Samoa International is a, uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Somatec. You see the name below, uh, Somatec. That means initially it was 100% held by, by Somatec. So now Ebony Ritz want to acquire some of the shares in uh, Samoan International, so they enter into an agreement with Somatec to buy Somatec's uh, share. Okay, 49% of Somatec's share. So now uh, the holding is, that means Somatec is no more 100% holding, lah, okay? So the shareholding is like this. Okay, you see in the picture, Ebony 49, Sumatec 51. Next slide. Okay, so uh, on 5th May 2010, okay, these three parties uh, enter into this uh, options and financial representation agreement called it um, OFRA, yeah? Auspicious Journey, Ebony, and Sumatec. Okay, the, the purpose of entering into this uh, agreement is to grant certain rights and options to auspicious and Ebony. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, under this uh, agreement, there are certain expectations, okay, relating to profit, meaning uh, Sumatec is uh, required, okay, or, or uh, uh, obligation to um, deliver, Okay, a profit of a certain percent of profits to, to uh, Ebony. Okay, if uh, these expectations are not met, let's say they have a profit that they must deliver, let's say 3 million, okay, but they deliver only 2 million, so there's shortfall of 1 million, right? So, uh, Somatec is expected to make good the profit shortfall, okay? So, um, options, what do you mean by options? Is, it means if the Somatec is unable to make good that shortfall, that means it doesn't have that much cash. So um, it gives the option to Ebony and Auspicious Journey to acquire, Ebony can acquire 2% of Somatec shares. So thus, this will make Ebony holding 51. You already hold 49, right? 
So plus another 2%, it will be majority holder of Samoa International. Okay. Uh, another option is to let Auspicious Journey, the one that holding 20% of Ebony, to acquire 49% of Sumatech shares. Okay. So I mean the shareholding will be um, that, that's the option. Okay. So the, the shareholding of Samoa International will change with it. That means Somatec will have no more share. Okay, Ebony will be 51 and Auspicious 49, right? So um, that's, that's the option. Okay. Uh, next slide. But unknown to Auspicious Journey, okay, behind its back, Ho Leong, okay, the one holding 80% in Ebony, okay, somewhere in uh, December 2012. It also entered into agreement with Ebony, Setinggi, and Somatec to acquire the 51% of Somatec okay, in Samoa International. We, we call this agreement the 51% SPA. We call it SPA, 51% uh, SPA okay, for reference. Huh? So um, we have to come up with purchase price right, to, to, to buy this uh, 51%. So 2% will come from Ho Leong. 49% of the purchase price will come from Stingy. Actually, Stingy is a nominee of Ho Leong. Lah, okay? uh, one of his, I think the CFO is uh, uh, related to this, this Ho Leong, right? So that's the, this, this one unknown to auspicious journey. Yeah? Next slide. So the purpose of this, uh, this agreement, uh, this arrangement between Ho Leong and Sumatek and Stingy and Ebony is to have this warehouse arrangement. Okay, is to um, have this salvage uh, warehouse agree, uh, agree, uh, arrangement to enable this uh, volume to take control of the oil tanker chartering business. Okay, so um, by that, by having that 51%, the shareholding in Samoa International change, lah, right? So Ebony 49 as the original one, okay, but now instead of Sumatek, it's Holyong 51%. Okay, so that's the how the you see how the proportion of the shareholding has changed. Next slide. Okay, so plaintiff broad case lah. Okay, the plaintiff as the minority, my suspicious unit holding the twenty percent in Ebony. So bring a minority shareholder uh, action. Okay, under section one eight one of the old company set lah. This one was prior to the two one uh, six two one seven amendment. Yeah, so um, it claimed that. The 51% SPA that Ho Leong has entered okay, with, um, without its knowledge has expropriated, that means has distinct, extinguished its rights. Okay? That means they cannot exercise the option. There's no more option to, 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 to exercise okay? um, because of uh, Ho Leong now has acquired the 51%. Okay? So there's no more 2% or 49% option. So um, it, it, his case is that they are entitled to maintain this minority shareholder action. So now it's the case of minority suing the majority, okay, uh, uh, shareholding, okay, under section 181. So uh, what is this story? Lah? Ho Leong used the 51% SPA to cause Ebony to enter into this conditional SPA. Uh, conditional is the 51% SPA for its own benefit. So on the other hand, the defendant's case okay, is that uh, actually this plaintiff uh, brought this action is to recover its investment. Okay, of the 20%, you want to get out of the investment. Okay, uh, because uh, you can see if you read the claim, uh, is claiming is to um, um, yeah, claim back, okay, it's 20% share, which uh, at the end of the conclusion, the court has refused, okay? And instead, court has wound up this Ebony in the, in the later uh, part. Next slide. Okay, so uh, in high court decision is that, uh, Majority shareholder alone, yeah, which means the company, yeah, Ebony Ritz and Ho Leong, uh, dismissed. Okay? Uh, it will allow, that means the majority shareholder 
the company is liable, okay, but the directors and the third party, which mean, which refers to Setinggi, and um, the directors means director of the whole uh, Ebony, okay, uh, um, dismiss claim, okay, um, because, okay, we'll go into the reason uh, later. Okay, so company liable, but director and third party not liable. So appeal to court of appeal, same. Uphold this high court, okay, same. Because the reason given by court of appeal, directors are only agent of a company. So they cannot be held personally liable for breach of the company. Okay, so because breach is by Ebony, not by the director. That's their story, okay, that's the ruling of the uh, rationale of the court or uh, lower court. Okay, next slide. Okay, so uh, as, as, okay, as expected, lah, auspicious journey appeal to the federal court. Eh? So there's these three questions um, that the federal court will have to answer. Okay, one is that whether the principle in Abdul Manaf, okay, against Nusantara Timur, that held that a director of a company is not personally liable for breach of the company, would apply to this minority shareholder action. Okay, uh, that is question one. Okay, so question two, whether a director of a company, okay, who are, sorry, who, who are okay, liable for wrongdoings, uh, who are privy to the wrongdoings perpetrated at the subject company, subject company is the Ebony, okay, and um, can be liable or not, whether the directors themselves can be liable or not, okay, under this minority shareholder, okay, action. That's question two, yeah. Uh, uh, next slide. Yeah, if yes, if question two means uh, says yes, so in what circumstances the directors can be liable? Okay. And then the third question is whether a third party, okay, who is not a director, not a shareholder, okay, of Ebony, can be liable or not, okay, under this minority shareholder action. That's question three. And if yes, what circumstances can that third party be liable? That's that's the sub question. Uh, huh? Okay, so these three questions, yeah. Next slide. Okay, so each party also have their case, okay, their case to, to present. So for question one, okay, just now them whether um, the the principle in Abdul Manaf whether can will also apply to um, this case, okay, for minority shareholder action. So the, the present case, the oppression centers on the company internal conduct, okay, which a minority uh, bringing against the majority. So this case was different from Abdul Manaf. Abdul Manaf case says about directors are liable to outside party, third party. Okay, it's not a case where minority who are uh, suing the majority. Not it's not about internal conduct. It's about external conduct. Whether directors liable for uh, third party under a breach of contract. Okay, so uh, Abdul Manaf said yes. Okay, I uh, say say uh, directors cannot be liable in that case because the breach one is company, not the director. Okay, uh, so that's that's their uh, so the auspicious journey says that um, he's trying to say that um, it should not apply. Okay, it should not apply. Should not apply means um, the directors can be liable, can be direct, can be liable, lah, Okay, uh, whereas in Abdul Manaf said directors cannot be liable because the breach is by company, so directors cannot be personally liable. Okay, but uh, in Ebony, in their defense, okay, it says that um, only in certain circumstances, okay, in these circumstances that a director can be personally liable, okay, where the director's action is prohibited by statute or uh, where a director breaches the okay, fiduciary duty under a statute, or where a director is uh, directly or personally involved in a wrongful manner, okay, uh, beyond their role as a company's agent. Okay, these are the three circumstances uh, where personally liable. Okay, next slide. So as for question two, 
Okay, question two just now we say uh, we, we, we have read okay whether the directors can be personally liable. Okay, as directors of Iboni Ritz, the Kwa brother have knowledge okay, of Iboni's rights and entitlement, but they choose to cause Ibonis to relinquish the 2% call option. Okay, because of their 51% SPA. Okay, so this has caused the option to exercise that 2% uh, okay, uh, or to acquire Sumatex uh, uh, share has been relinquished, okay, give up. So the Kwa brothers also excluded okay, auspicious journey from deliberating because it, the deal is behind the back, behind auspicious journey's back, right? Okay, so this denies okay, uh, plaintiff the chance to deliberate whether they can abandon the 51%, abandon the Ibonis rights or not. Okay, if, if they have the chance to deliberate, they may not, they, they may object. Okay, so, but it, because this one was done without their knowledge, so, it denies the right. So for uh, Ibonis okay, and Holyong was their defense, their story, um, Kwa brothers are not personally liable because the, the, they enter this 51% um, SPA is the purpose is to, uh, is, is in the best interest of Iboni rates. Okay, the purpose of having this uh, uh, the ar arrangement uh, is to, yeah, it's actually to salvage the bony rates, okay? So there is no breach of any fiduciary duty. What they do is the best interest of the bony rates. Okay, next slide. Okay, question three, whether outsider can uh, grant, okay, whether third parties can be liable or not. Okay, so for uh, plaintiff case is that uh, under section 181, the court has wide powers Okay, to deal, okay, when, um, uh, what the remedy to give to minority shareholders. Okay, so it is not restricted to only that. So there's nothing there under Section 181 to say that they cannot uh, grant remedies to third parties. So which means, yes, lah, they can grant. Lah. Court has jurisdiction to grant remedies against, make third parties liable. Okay, so the, in this case, the director of Satindi, who was the uh, CFO of Holyong, Okay, and uh, directly involved in negotiation of the 51% SPA. So he was privy to, uh, he was the party okay, to various corporate conduct, okay, that an acts that come within section 181, okay, that will subject him to uh, be liable for minority, I mean, oppression. Uh. But on the other hand, Ibonis' um, defense is that these Kwa brothers cannot be personally liable because Heiko found that their acts uh, carry in the best interest of Iboni. And in any event, if there's third party okay, and cause injury, uh, you can deal with a derivative action, okay? not an oppression action. Section 181 is an oppression action, not a derivative action. Yeah? Next slide. Okay, so what does the court answer? Okay? Court's finding. That's just now is the argument for both parties. Okay? So Section 181, Okay, is mentioned now and then, now and then. So we have to look at what the section says. Okay, now under the new act is uh, and it's it's under section three four six. No more under one eight one lah. Okay, it's three four six of the new companies act. So it says that any member or the venture holder of a company may apply to court for an order under this section on the ground that the affairs of the company is being conducted or the powers of the directors are being exercised in a manner oppressive to the members. Okay, so uh, you see the two limbs are either affairs of the company are being conducted oppressively or the directors are exercising their powers in an oppressive manner. So either if you can, you can uh, show either one of these two, then okay, it, it, it impliedly says that okay, power of the directors, that means the directors can be held liable. Okay, in reading this uh, section. Okay, next slide. And B, some of the act of the company has been done or threatened or that some resolution of the members, okay, has been passed, okay, which uh, will discriminate against, okay, or uh, the members, okay. So, uh, these are the link, okay, A and B, yeah, of section 181. Next slide. So, uh, and section 181 sub 2 is the remedy which the court can order, 
Okay, uh, it can order either one of these uh, direct or vary any transaction which has been entered. Okay, uh, any agreement. Okay, or regulate the conduct of company in the future. Okay, provide for purchase of shares by other members. Okay, actually, initially, what auspicious journey is asking for is C. Okay, they ask this uh, Ebony or uh, Holyong to buy out its twenty percent shares, which the court has refused. Okay, D purchase of shares by the company. Either Ebony itself buy over the shares of the uh, uh, um, auspicious journey. Okay, uh, um, to provide for reduction of capital, or the last resort is to be worn out. Okay, so in this case, okay, the federal court case, I mean the high court in the lower court has ordered Ebony to be worn up. So the, the court chose option E. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so here we see uh, who, who, what are the uh, parties. Uh? Company in issue here refers to Ebony. Uh? Shareholder in issue here refers to auspicious journey, the minority. Majority shareholder refers to Ho Leong here. So the directors here refer to the Kwa brothers as directors of Ebony Ritz. Okay, so the court, high court, okay, the court means below, has found that the affairs of Ebony Ritz were conducted in a manner oppressive to auspicious journey. So the high court agreed, okay, it found based on the facts that Ebony Ritz, the affairs of the company, Ebony Ritz, were conducted in a manner oppressive to auspicious journey. Okay, and the act of Ebony Ritz through the directors had unfairly discriminates against auspicious journey. So, therefore, there are oppression by uh, Ebony Ritz, meaning the plaintiff able to establish oppression by Ebony Ritz. So, the answer to question one is no, negative. Okay, it, it doesn't apply the, the, the uh, Abdul Manaf principle, yeah? Okay, uh, next slide. So does the reading of section 181 okay, of the old company act allow liability? What about directors? Okay, now it, it found that the company is the liable. What about the directors? Okay, so in Lim A just now that I've read, it says that the directors exercise of a power as a basis for establishing oppression, right? Either the affairs of the company or the exercise of the director's powers. So oppression is a minority shareholder remedy against those controlling it. Okay, it's a remedy for minority against the majority. So including the directors who manage the company. Okay? So therefore, the relief against directors must be a natural and logical consequence. If you can make the company liable, then because this, this minority shareholder, okay, naturally you'll be able to make the directors uh, uh, liable. Okay? Because they are the one who manage the company. Okay, next slide. Okay, so that's why court, um, court found that, okay, uh, we, we continue first. Huh? Construction of section 181 is wider than the UK equivalent because it compare with the UK equivalent to say that intention of parliament is to enable the court to put an end. Okay, when court want to consider whether to allow the claim under section 181, the intention, okay, must consider the intention is to put an end of the, to the oppression or how to remedy the oppression, okay? So section 181 sub 2, okay, just now the ABCDE, okay, it's not exhaustive. Court has the power to order other than the link, okay, other than uh, section 181 2, okay? And further, there's nothing under section 181 to says that directors and parties cannot be liable, right? Okay, so whether, so the answer to question whether directors can be liable, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, yeah? Next slide. Okay, whether okay the legal test to to how to determine whether uh, in what circumstances a director or third party can be liable. Okay, so to make a director or third party personally liable, you must show close relation. Okay, the close nexus. Okay, between the conduct, the oppressive conduct, and that director. Okay, the fact that that director is uh, just being a director of the company is not enough. How he is the alter ego 
or how is the one the mastermind or how is the one behind those things and uh, you must show those things yeah that only that will show close relation if you're not sure that because he's director of the company then he, he must be liable then that reason cannot cannot pakai okay it's not it's not enough okay he must show more than that it means deliberate involvement how that director is uh, deliberate involvement okay uh, how his this decision means the company's decision okay so that that means the close nexus okay if you can't relate that oppression and the uh, director then you cannot establish okay so uh, next slide All right, from the uh, High Court's finding of the facts, okay, in the first uh, instance, the court of the first instance, the action of the Kwa brothers entering into the 51% SPA by expropriating the rights of auspicious journey uh, for the call option uh, was done in the best interest of Ebony rates. Okay, that's the finding. So in that case, the directors cannot be personally liable. Okay, there's no breach. If they, what they do is the best interest of Ebony Reeds, they cannot be breached. So the answer whether um, question 2.1 and, and third parties and the, the okay, what circumstances third party can be liable is that you must show close nexus, as I've mentioned just now. So what here means is that on the principle, yes, a director can be liable. Okay, A third party can also be liable, but based on this facts, okay, facts of this case, okay, the court says that the directors in this case are not liable, are not liable, okay, even though the principal says liable, but based on facts, okay, the directors in this case are not liable because what they've done is in the best interest of Ibon. okay, so that's, that's the uh, conclusion, uh, next slide. So the federal court affirmed the high court's decision and also the court of appeals decision, okay? The company is liable for oppression, okay? And order this company to be wound up, okay? It has refused auspicious journey's request for a buyout order, okay? So uh, because it says uh, Ebony Ritz are no longer solvent, doesn't, there's no point to continue this, running this business, this company. So that's why it ordered to be wound up. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, one, one uh, note okay, that I would like to highlight under this uh, case is that this case, okay, um, it mentions about this merchant shipping ordinance, 1952. Section 11 of this ordinance says that a company involved in all tanker chartering business must be majority Malaysian. Okay, so this also is one of the reasons why the court um, uh, refused to, to buy out, okay, to, to, to refer to the buyout, because uh, if the 51, if, if it allows, okay, the 51% the, uh, SPA, uh, it will mean Holyong will be the majority. Okay, Holyong will be the majority instead of Sumatex because it will acquire 51% of the um, Sumatex business. Remember, Sumatex is an all chartering business, right? So an all chartering business must be majority Malaysian. Okay, that's one of the reasons that court did not allow the 51% SPA. Okay, All right. Um, let's see the takeaway. Next slide. So the takeaway is that the court may impose liability okay, against director or third party in a minority shareholder action, provided there is a sufficiently close nexus between the oppressive conduct. You must link the oppressive conduct with that director or with that third party, that particular director or that particular third party. Okay, uh, this, is the, this is the condition, this is the principle. Okay, the, this is a takeaway. And I hope that uh, I think uh, there's no more. Okay, that, that ends the, the case study. Okay, is there any, any question or um, comment?
Okay, I hope you're, you're clear on this. Okay, if, uh, uh, if, if there's any other questions that you'd like to ask on later, or you can always uh, uh, text me or always uh, yeah, contact me. All right, if no, then uh, I thank you for attending. Okay, thank you for your attendance. Um, okay, everyone, thank you for attending. Uh, we will send you a feedback form up shortly. So hopefully you can receive your feedback uh, on this lunch and learn session. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.